This patient was referred to me a few months ago for evaluation of tooth number 31. According to the patient, the root canal was done a few years ago by her previous dentist. And um, as you can see, there's a prefab metal post built up and a PFM crown on the tooth. And patient said that ever since the root canal, tooth had never felt the same. Tooth never felt right. And um, she had gone back to that same dentist a few times and the dentist told her everything was fine and he couldn't, he, he couldn't uh, tell her why um, the tooth never felt right and uh, uh, because everything on the x-ray looked great and the root canal, the root canal was done properly. And here's the data as you can see when I, when I first saw this patient. And I take a look at the tooth, percussion tender, palpation slightly tender, probings two to four millimeters all around. And I'm looking at this x-ray and of course we don't look at just one x-ray, we don't just take one angulation PA. Um, so we always take uh, at least three, three PAs and take a look at this PA, right there. Now, what do you see on this PA? Look at that. This dentist missed the mesial, mesial root completely. So found one, missed, missed the other one. What are the chances of these lower second molars to have only two canals? Very, very rare, very rare. They at least have three. So when this dentist found only two, he should have been very concerned, but anyways, we have what we have. So I went over um, my findings with the patient and uh, let the patient know that the dentist unfortunately had missed the root and patient wanted to try to see if we can save the tooth. And that's what we did. I did selective endo here. There was no reason to traumatize this tooth and, and, and uh, uh, damage it to try to remove this prefab metal post. As you can see, the palate, the uh, the distal root is clean. I don't see any issues with the distal root, so why mess with it? So I did selective endodontic retreatment, focused on the mesial mesial roots only, and take a look. And this was immediately after I had. Uh, redone the root canal on this patient and I used the injection technique of Gotapercha and look the missed root that I found I ended up obturating it long you see that I ended up obturating that root long and again that's the date, as you can see, the date that we completed the endodontic retreatment. Unfortunately, again, wasn't on purpose. It just happens sometimes. Was I worried? I was not. Because I know, I know the science and I know um, that the extent of obturation um, doesn't cause endodontic failure. What causes endodontic failure is uh, presence of um, bacteria in the canals. So take a look here. Patient came in today for a different tooth, and we took a we took a PA of tooth number thirty one just to make sure it was doing okay. Again, you see how long that was pretty long, obturating that that canal. And look at the X ray today. That's the X ray from today. What happened to all of that gutta percha and sealer? Almost completely resorbed by the patient's own body. And here's the date, as you can see, only a month and a half ago when we redid the root canal. And so this is a month and a half post-op. One month, two weeks, or six weeks, six weeks post-op of tooth number 31. Patient has no symptoms, no issues with the tooth. All of that overextended, got a Persian sealer, almost completely resorbed and gone. Well, 
So I'm not saying that from now on, option rate short or option rate long, but once in a while, if that happens, if you follow the, all the fundamentals of endodontics, fundamentals of endodontics were adhered to, and you eradicated microorganisms from within the canals, then obturating short, obturating long, obturating flush doesn't cause endodontic failure. Uh, once in a while, if that happens, as long as you had followed the fundamentals of endodontics during endodontic uh, therapy, rubber dam, proper instrumentation shaping of the canals, proper irrigation, um, full strength sodium hypochlorite, which is in uh, here in the United States is um, almost 6% sodium hypochlorite. Um, if you followed all of those fundamentals, then chances are that, that, that the tooth will be okay, patient will be okay. But if you, let's say you didn't use a rubber dam, you didn't instrument, um, uh, shape, irrigate, activate properly, um, and uh, you left microorganisms behind. And on top of that, you either obturated short or obturated long, then you're going to have a problem. But it all starts with the fact that you hadn't followed the fundamentals of endodontics. And fundamental, one of the fun, major fundamentals of endodontics is rubber dam. If you didn't use a rubber dam during endodontic treatment or endodontic retreatment, you're in big trouble because everything after that is under a big question mark. But as you can see here, perfect. What happened to all that gutta percha sooner? Almost completely gone. No symptoms whatsoever. Patient's very happy.